it's Christine Leahy, and it's time for the best thing I heard this week. Donald Trump called in, and Colin picked his brain about politics and sports. I mean, I'm running against people, some of whom are smart, not all, to be honest with you, but some of whom are smart. How many of those people would you hire in a top position for a transactional position in your empire? Well, uh, let's just say there's a, a percentage of them, okay, but not all of them. I okay. mean, I, I, I'm not impressed with all of them, and, and some I am impressed with, frankly. I mean, you have some good talent up there, and you, know, like you have people that are governors and senators, and you have some very smart people up there, so we'll see what happens. Do you think Jeb Bush wants to be president or feels pressured to be? I think he's under a tremendous amount of pressure. You know, I, I had an expression which I really felt that was, you know, I talked about a low energy individual. Yes, you know, we yes. don't need low energy, okay? I don't think, frankly, Rubio is going to make it. I think to me, he's a lightweight, okay? So you see that. And you, we need very strong people because our country is being taken away like candy from a baby. We need strong people. We need the Tom Brady of, of negotiators. You know, I play golf with Tom. Tom is is one of those few people that ends up doing better under pressure. Yes. Jack Nicholas, as an example. Why? Tiger in his prime. Why? So many different. It, you're born with it. You're born with it. You, you can't teach it. You're born with it. You don't see it often. It's very rare. But and you'll see it with the great champions. Tom is one of them. You'll see it with Jack Nicholas. They do better under pressure. There aren't many of them, Colin. I'll tell you what. But when you have them. It's very special to see. Jason Whitlock gave us his take on Andrew Luck. You compared him to the biggest stars in the world, LeBron, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Uh, no, Andrew Luck has not earned that kind of praise. He's been good. He hasn't won anything yet, Colin, at the professional level. Let's pump the brakes. And again, we don't know how he handles success, adversity, this could be a trend of him backing up a bit. Now, we think it's an injury, but to me, if it were an injury and the Colts knew, why then why really are they firing Pep Hamilton? You know what's more difficult to handle than failure? Success. Success. And so we'll see how Andrew Luck handles the first three years of a very successful career, and now in the fourth year, he's struggling and having problems. We'll see. Spike Lee told us his opinion on Dr. Ben Carson. It's just not the fact that Dr. Ben Carson is conservative. I mean, we could be here all night just going over his quotes. Many times people think African America is one monolithic group. They're we not. We all look alike, think alike, talk alike, and that's not the case at all. And so I would agree with my man, Kareem. Dr. Ben Carson, as the next president of the United States of America is not the move. What's the move? You know I'm really who I'm intrigued by? Bernie from Brooklyn. Bernie Sanders? Yes. And David Spade shared the story behind Tommy Boy. I mean, Farley was killing it on Saturday Night Live at that point. I was doing okay, not great, but Lauren saw us at the office and said, why don't you do something about how these guys are acting? Because, like, I'd walk around and Farley and I were just moping around me and, and, and I'd make fun of him and he'd laugh. Right. And, we had sort of a good vibe going, and then um, they wrote a movie about it. You know, I hadn't been offered a movie at that point. I had to audition, and, and to have a movie greenlit before you even wrote it, they just said, we're doing this this summer. And so we were trying to make it good, racing up to the start date. Now we have the best opportunity in the world, but we don't even know what we're doing. And yeah, it was about two guys in Ohio trying to sell brake pads, which isn't a great pitch. <laughs> so we never would have got it. I'm trying to add jokes like Fat Guy in a Little Coat, which is what he did at the office. And right. if we go, no one is watching us, you know what I mean? So it's just like, hey, Farles, I'm looking at the stuff. Would you want to do Fat Guy in Little Coat like at work? And, and he's like, is that funny to people? I go, I think. And then he would sing it, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty funny. Actually, I went back. I did this bald joke where I put a bald patch, like a, like a little patch for Dan Aykroyd scene where the wind blows it back. And we all watched it. We're like, I don't think that's funny enough. And I go, I think I have to go full bald. Like, it's funnier. So I flew all the way back to Toronto for one joke and redid the whole bald cap. It took six hours. But you look back, forget the work, it was a funny joke. Just one bit, Yes. but it's worth it, way worth it. So all cut together, I'm like, I think this is pretty funny, but I think I like myself too much because <laughs> I, I, let's see what anyone else thinks. <laughs> and Farley is always just so mesmerizing. So I knew he was very likable and it played into all his fun stuff. And then, yeah, it came out and it did not even blow up. It wasn't a $100 million movie. It made 35 and it just had a like a cult thing after that. This was the best thing I heard this week. Tune in weekdays at noon Eastern.